circle. Texan will boot it away. Ulysses Bennett, the fourth, is the deep recruiter for Ole Miss at the goal line. And we'll see Jackson Dart, Trey Harris, Quinshawn Judkins, and that cast of playmakers momentarily. And Zirkel boots it deep in the end zone. Jackson Dart was the USC, part of a meltdown in 21. This is his second season, Kirk. He still plays with a chip on his shoulder. He comes from a football family because Kiffin brought in a couple of guys to kind of challenge him, two high-profile transfers, and Dart fought him off, and he's had a tremendous second season here. Yeah, he has. I, I love that Lane Kiffin told us he plays quarterback like a linebacker. That gives you an idea and a, probably a big influence from his dad with his dad being a football player. He's going to have to play well tonight, be on point, and he's going to have to be involved in running the football. And right away, you got a flinch from the offensive line. Before the first play, the crowd and the movement of that Georgia defense plays a role. They do it a lot. And they draw a lot of false starts. And that was Caleb Warren, Staff the center. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. First down. Yeah, you're going to see this all night. That's a stem. Georgia does this. And when they do that in a crowd, you can't really hear. The center moves the football. So the last thing they can do is have false starts to get behind the sticks. Shuffled offensive line. Right tackle. Micah Pettis hurt himself in practice this week. He is out. Dart. Launching downfield over the hands of Dayton Wade, who had gained some separation. Could have been an electric play to open things up. But Bullard getting down a little bit nosy in the box, not expecting Ole Miss to take a shot on the very first play of the game. He was beaten. Wade had him beat by a couple steps. They just missed a home run here to start this game. Dart. To Judkins. And he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. Strong play by Tyke Smith. And now it's third and very long. Uh, Tyke Smith is a name we'll be calling a lot all over this field. One of the most productive players on his Georgia defense, 23. So you had the false start, and then you had that opportunity miss that you talked about. You don't get many against this Georgia defense. Georgia not showing pressure. They only rush three. Dart steps up, flips it short, but a long way to go for Judkins, and he'll come up just short. Lowered the pads, but a half yard shy of the marker, and it's fourth down. Jalen Walker missed him coming out of the backfield. Playing they're gonna, fast. Yeah, they're going to take a chance here. Their own 35 yard line. We got Jaden Williams limping up. He's the replacement left tackle, and they get it. Direct snap. Judkins powers for a first down. How about the gamble at your own 35? Hey, it gives you an idea. There's a little, a little bit of a limp there. It's like Jaden Williams. That's tough. See, Williams steps up, starting a left tackle. Victor Kerr moves to right yeah. tackle with Micah Pettis down tonight. Look to be really struggling, Kurt. Judkins. The busiest running back in the SEC leads the conference and carries is third in rush yards. Uh, this is something to keep an eye on because the way he was moving Williams, he's he's getting up now slow. And in fact, they're going to take him off the field. He tried to gut it out. Now they're going to end up moving Kern back to that left tackle spot. Eli Acker, number 73, a backup guard, is in the game. I mean, it, this line finally has been getting healthy these last few weeks, and now they have to deal with this and this in that atmosphere of this defense. Pitch on the edge. Two stiff arms from Judkins, who is having a terrific season. Muscles through Dalen Everett for a first down. The last year in his freshman year, he kind of exploded onto the scene, and everybody was expecting huge numbers from him early this year. They, their offensive line with a lot of transfer portals, they didn't have continuity. They had some injuries. But since the LSU game, it's been a different offense. Judkins has been able to do it. You can see the broken tackles and the yards after contact, and we saw that there to pick up that first. So crucial to get that first first down to get the offense going here. There's a keeper for Dart around the end for about three. 
Love his legs and he's not explosive, but he's athletic and he runs powerfully at 6'2", 220. And it makes that defense have to respect him and it can open up different aspects of the pass game with the, with the threat of his legs. He's one for seven touchdowns this season. Slow developing play. Dart in the pocket delivers a pass and he was in the grasp of Smile Munden. Stepping up and the pass is incomplete. Yeah, he, you'll see him here. They only rush three and drop eight. Munden's just kind of reading the back. He sees no threat, so he's going to come in there on a green dog blitz and eventually gets to him. But give Dart a lot of credit. There's that strength we talked about at 6'2", 220, just to be able to get out of that and throw it away. So Judkins out. Ulysses Bentley is the back on this third and six. Pocket collapses. Dart takes off. And he'll make the first down and more with his legs. Scampers inside the Georgia 40. Jalen Walker had a chance but couldn't corral it. But look where Jalen Walker comes, Chris. And when he doesn't get home, look what happens. Nobody's on the edge. You're playing man-to-man. -man. You play man-to-man -man against Jackson Dart. You better get your eyes turned around. No one's there to pick him up on that scramble. 14-yard gain. Now Dart. Delivers a sideline route wide open is Caden Priest on the tight end. Who's come back healthy, knocked down by Bullard, but it's first and goal Rebels. And Priestcorn comes in motion. Nobody picks him up. Nobody accounts for him. He did a good job of selling it and getting behind the true freshman, Raylan Wilson. But this is Ole Miss right here Priest on Ford the is, attack. He's down on one knee, Kirk, the tight end. After making that reception, they picked up 33. He's just been getting back after a knee injury early in the season. Missed the first three games. One of the tight ends who came out of the portal from Memphis. This would be tough if he yeah, can't. He, he can block. He can catch. He's a threat here. He's he's going to come in motion right here. But watch the Georgia defense lose him. Remember, Jamon Dumas Johnson is not playing. So you got a young freshman linebacker right here. He's his eyes are in the backfield completely loses the big tight end down the sideline and that to me coming into this game was my biggest thought and concern for Georgia smile Munden's on one side but Jamon Dumas Johnson 10 not playing affects the communication against an up tempo offense and we've seen it a couple times on his first drive young linebackers getting lost with their eyes in the backfield Bullard came across got the helmet on the leg it looks like priest corn is up and and walking to the sidelines to be okay now can they punch it in like I said he is, he is a very very important part of this offense he sets the edge we got an official down we've got a locked one on here in these first five minutes of this game remember they went for this on fourth down at their own 35 to keep this drive alive it gives you an idea about Lane Kiffin's approach tonight the early gamble this is the 11th play of this opening drive Georgia not particularly elite as a red zone defense this season. And look at this in goal to go drives, only kept them out once. 10 of 11 times opponents have scored a touchdown in these situations. Judge Kittens is back in the game. He's got the football, makes a cut, and will score standing up. A flag is down, so hold on. Now another flag comes in late. Holding. Offense number 78, 10 yard penalty, 15 first down. Jeremy James, the guard. And they move him out here to tackle Chris. And anytime you see a ball bounce like this, you worry about the edge. Did somebody lock somebody up? And in fact, he does. How about they're rotating guys all over that front? You, you talk James, he's normally a guard. Now it's out at right tackle. And Lane Kiffin doing the best job that he can. And John Garrison, that offensive line coach, Got him in a bear hug there. So instead of a touchdown, first and goal from back of the 15. Judkins makes a cut and scores anyway. Call it back. Take two is a touchdown. And the Rebels right down the field, 75 yards. 15-yard touchdown run. Uh, remember we talked about the offensive line moving around? We want you to watch the blocks by the left side of this offensive line. Watch them be able to get this outside stretch play. You talk about getting a hat on a hat here. 
Good job by the receiver picking up the safety there, Bullard. And there's that tough downhill running by Quinshawn Junkins. He talked about the offensive line, which is reshuffled. Guys playing out of position, guys stepping up. How about that performance against this Georgia defense on the road? Needed to start fast coming in here. They sure did that on that first drive. Early gamble by Kiffin, and the Rebels cash it in. Kirby Smart over there, the whiteboard session with the Georgia defense. They have Vanderbilt, Florida, Missouri, and now Ole Miss have each scored a touchdown on their first possession against this Georgia defense. And the Dogs have fallen behind for the sixth time in their last seven SEC games. These are not the first round knockout artists we've seen in recent seasons. No, it's been more about in-game adjustments and resiliency. We'll see if it plays out tonight. So Carson Beck, when he was in high school, was in the same Elite 11 quarterback class with guys like Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young, and the probable rookie of the year in the NFL, C.J. Stroud. So he's been around for a while, and he's been here at Georgia for four years. Red shooter in the COVID season. It was a crowded quarterback room in 2020. He waited his time. Didn't really have a high-pressure snap in his entire career until this season. And he has played brilliantly, and he's shown us why Kirby Smart had no worries about him. And Bowers is in the lineup to start this game at tight end. It's a welcome sight for Georgia fans. Dejan Edwards gets the feed, and he powers ahead for eight yards on first down. Well, Carson Beck, Chris, I'm glad you said he waited his turn. It, 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 you just don't see that a lot anymore. With the, you just saw the Elite 11. Most of these guys, after a year or two, they're gone. He didn't blink when we talked to him about it yesterday. He said, I wanted to play here. I wanted to be a part of this great program. I was able to learn a lot from Stetson Bennett, who's back, to watch this game and had a chance to really grow. And I get a chance to play with so many great players. So tip your cap to a guy like that. Second and short throw, near side. Catch made by Ra Ra Thomas. The transfer from Mississippi State, and the dogs move to six across the 40. So Pete Golding's the defensive coordinator from Ole Miss, and, and he doesn't have the, the corners to lock you down in man-to-man, -man, which is what he would like to do. So he's a bend-but-don't-break style this year. Wants to play zone, wants to keep the ball in front of him, try to make a kick a field goal down in the red zone. But they're going to give up some yards, obviously, through the air. Meanwhile, Mike Bobo, the former Georgia quarterback in the 90s, back for his second stint as the OC here. How great is that? Bowers and McConkie together on the same side. Georgia fans haven't seen that all year. Beck looked that direction. Nobody open. Comes back over the middle. And the catch is made by Thomas, who slips a tackle. Offers a stiff arm and is dragged down at the 11 by Trey Washington. Well, I just talked about how they play a ton of zone, and they go to man-to-man. -man. And this is why they don't play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Heck of a throw by Beck. Good adjustment back. And then yards after the catch. I was on the field before the game. Talked to Golding and Lane Kiffin. How do you feel, man? What's going on? What do you think? Man, we got a tackle in space. No yards after the catch. And here, early, Thomas makes a big play, and now he's off on the sideline. And Jarrell Stinson looked a little bit overmatched in coverage. That's a 44-yard gain. Kendall Milton is the back to the left of Beck. Pump fake by Beck. He's looking for the end zone. Fires to Makaki, and it's incomplete. Covered on the edge there by John Saunders Jr., the nickelback. Well, we had a chance to visit with him. He's a guy that played quarterback most of his high school career. Didn't get recruited very much and knew that he had a tough assignment today. He's in phase, but he doesn't really ever turn to find the football. He's lucky. If he would have pushed a little bit more, you could have seen a flag thrown there in the end zone and put him at the one-yard line. Second and ten. Crowd saw the replay and wanted one. Yeah, you don't get your head turned around. That's usually a quick indicator for the official. McConkie set to the right. Beck looks that direction, fires underneath to Milton. Bouncing off people. It'll be first and goal, dogs. As they quickly try to answer the Rebels' touchdown here. Deshaun Edwards is known to be the quick back. And they got a healthy Kendall Milton now to be the guy that can come out of the backfield. Great hands, and this is what he brings to the table. Almost lost that football after that hit. Helmet right on the ball. Is able to hold on to it right there. Looks like it almost came loose. Holds on to it. And they have a nice one-two punch in that backfield with quickness with 30. And then the power 
with with uh, with Milton. He's a tackle breaker. A lot of yards after contact. They're both in the backfield now. Milton in front of Edwards. High formation, old school toss sweep. Edwards, that'll make the Georgia faithful smile. And the dogs quickly do answer a 75 yard drive. How many times that play been called? In oh, man. Hey, hey, somewhere Herschel Walker's enjoying this one. Here's Trust, the right tackle that gets out in front. I just love to see the tailback leading the way there. Kendall Milton. Good blocking, see the receivers getting involved here. Big tight end helped set the edge. Just no chance to stop that play. Milton helped his buddy out with a block. Yes, Herschel Walker probably had uh, a couple thousand yards on that play alone. That's it. Which big do these team. Peyton Woodring, the freshman kicker. To tie things up, a fast start here. Great first half of the first quarter in Athens. This is what happened. They fall behind, but this offense, they don't panic, of course. They respond quickly and frequently. Go beyond thanks to make a difference. Well, I think it's just perspective of, you know, how big this game is, but then how small it is compared to that and people that serve our country and um, fight for us every day is really so much bigger than us. To celebrate Veterans Day and, and so many of them made so many sacrifices so that we could even have uh, the game of football. And um, we certainly appreciate what all our veterans have done and how they've served our country. George Warner, ex Letterman who served, I get to honor Sergeant Fowler, Andrew R. On this Veterans Day, yeah. Semper Fi, Drew. That's right. right. <laughs> Love that. Well, let's look at this first drive for Ole Miss and talk about some of the youth for, in for Javon Dumas Johnson. Here you see Jalen Walker, great player, young player, loses contain. Raylan Wilson, eyes in the backfield, just loses the big tight end, free scoring for a big play. They're trying to make adjustments. There he is talking to Wilson. See a lot of that. And then great blocks. And you get Junkins running downhill. He had seven touches on 11 plays on that opening drive. Guys like Wilson, C.J. Allen, very talented young players, but Kirby says they're fresh, but they're going to have their moments tonight. Dart across the middle, low throw collected by Dayton Wade, former Hilltopper of Western Kentucky. They got two very productive receivers out of the portal, Wade and, of course, Trey Harris from Louisiana yeah, Tech. They've done a great job this year. And again, the first first down for Ole Miss ignites their tempo. Out of the backfield, Bentley knocked down immediately. Chaz Chambliss. You think about that, but what does that mean? It ignites their tempo. Charlie Weiss Jr. says that when we get that opportunity, we get that first first down. We want Georgia on their heels. Bentley makes a cut, knocked down a couple yards short by Tyke Smith. This offensive line is doing a heck of a job for Lane Kiffin and. Charlie Weiss Jr. We were kind of kidding with Charlie Weiss Jr. about man, your offensive style compared to your dad's <laughs> offense could not be any more different. His mind works quickly, doesn't it? You have to to call plays in this offense and bulldozing for a first down is Bentley right through Tyke Smith. His backs run hard. You're talking about Georgia safeties and linebackers. They know they got to come downhill. Their number one goal tonight is not a, just affecting dart that's maybe the second or third goal their number one goal is we know we have to win the line of scrimmage and we don't have jalen carter right we got to win the line of scrimmage and we've got to get them in obvious passing situations we will show you the time between snaps they substituted so georgia had a chance to kind of slow things down dart first down will launch downfield into coverage under thrown and almost intercepted fighting back trying to make the pick was kamari lassiter uh, i, I think Malachi starts does a good job in recovering Lassiter the best cover man most versatile that ball is under thrown He has his eyes on a ball almost adjust back I think he waited one or two hitches too late to throw that football But both of the Georgia veterans back there doing a good job not giving up the home run a shot So two unsuccessful deep shots so far the overthrow and that force into coverage second and ten Judkins Slammed into alignment, heavy traffic off the left side, and not much there. Nazir Stackhouse got him. Well, this movement that Glenn 
Clint Schumann and Kirby Smart believe in this. Watch the movement collectively, and then watch how you free a linebacker. It, so sometimes the defensive linemen, they're not going to make the plays, but they're going to occupy the offensive linemen and free those backers to have a path to get into that backfield. Is this four down territory for Kiffin? They need nine here on third. Long throw. Catch made short of the marker. We're going to find out right now. Trey Harris came back to get it. It's fourth and three. No brainer here. They go for it so many times on fourth down. They're 10 of 25 in a year if you include that first drive. A lot of their third downs just set up fourth down attempts. As Judkins on a direct snap to convert the first fourth down gamble. He's to the left of Dart. Plenty of time, but now running out of it and slings it incomplete. A slow developing play. There's a flag down sort of in the holding zone. We'll see about that. He was patient back there. There's nobody open. They may have gotten Junkins picking up a blitz on a hold. holding. Offense number four. The penalty is a crime. It's open plays a first down for Turn Turnover on that. You got the five offensive linemen. This could not hold up. Junkins to the hold call. So dog stop will set up the offense at their 40. Big Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Corvallis, Oregon. Beavers emphatic win tonight. And the Washington Huskies hard fought home win over Utah. Their defense did a tremendous job. Penix, three total touchdowns. Another test for the undefeated UW team, though. Washington plays USC and Caleb Williams at the Coliseum. And they, today they find a way to win. And then next week you got Oregon State and Corvallis. That is a grind. Edwards slams forward after about seven. It is good to see Brock Bowers out here. They haven't targeted him yet, but that figures to happen soon. Oh, yeah, you're talking about just a freak of an athlete. You know about his work ethic. He's like a T.J. Watt or a J.J. Watt kind of guy. Doesn't say a lot, just shows up as humble as you could ever hope for. And I think he has a chance to be one of the elite, I'm talking elite tight ends, not just in college football, but when he goes up to the next level. I think he steps right in and stars. Oh, yeah. so. Doesn't blink. Again, projected top five pick. And off inside, Edwards into the secondary. Rumbles down inside the Rebels 30. The ground game is cranked up 22 more yards. Uh, we're talking about guys coming back. How about having a big tight, a big tackle? Marius Mims back. Nice job on that right side, just opening that hole up. We talked about Milton brings the power. Edwards brings the quickness with great vision. That time, great acceleration through that right side. And Mims brings the bulk. <laughs> Six, seven. They list him at 330. There's no way. He's way north of that. A very large human. And a projected first round pick is back in the mix tonight. Touch with the dog is getting healthy. Back off the play fake. Right down the seam. Caught for a touchdown by McConkey. Beautiful throw. They're not taking long to score tonight. No. 60 yards in a minute 22. Running to set up the pass. Beck looks pretty sharp in the early going, Kirk, as he has the whole season long. <laughs> Woodring makes it 14-7. Take us through the AT&T clicker here. Because you're going to love this. Look at who you have on the right side together. Bowers and McConkey. Watch how the safeties are impacted by 19. Watch how they go to the middle. They want to take him away. Two safeties take him, opens it up for McConkey, and he throws an absolute seed for a strike. Nice job at the stem of that route, pushing him a little bit outside. And with all the attention of Brock Bowers, he got exactly what he looked. Did a nice job of looking that safety off as well. Giving him just a little bit more room. 
and he was in rhythm on that throw. You saw the Bowers effect. That was beautiful, Kirk. And having McConkie and Bowers together. What did Beck tell us yesterday? All my toys together to play with. He feels like a kid on Christmas morning. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, and not throw Mims in there, too, his right tackle. To have him back, the backs now are healthy. Bowers and McConkie together. This is what this offense envisioned when they had these players coming back. Even though they lost Stetson Bennett, a lot of great players, this is what they thought they could be. A little different. They don't really have an explosive big playback, but they can certainly grind it out. And they got speed and craftiness for Beck to sort out. Let's go to Matt Berry for an update. Hey, Matt. Hello, gentlemen. Time now for your Chick-fil-A move on the field. Ohio State going all grays in the end around to Marvin Harrison. I give the play design an A. I give the uniform design, Herb, a B. Not great, but Ohio State up early 7-0. I hear you, man. I like, I'm an old-fashioned guy. Just put on the scarlet and gray. I'm with you in this case. Judkins cuts it back, dives forward. You think Ohio State fans, by the way, today, Kirk, noticed what happened in Happy Valley? Wolverines uh, looked uh, very impressive. They did. They look, you know, you kind of sensed they would be on a mission today with all the stuff going on around that program, and they showed up. Judkins again around left end. Yeah, they are a great perimeter run team, Kirk. That plays into a weakness of this Georgia defense on the edge for some, for some reason. Yeah, we saw Auburn run the outside zone play. We saw Missouri last week run the outside zone. And it's smart. You're not going to run the football in between the tackles against Georgia. You're going to run anywhere. You better get to the edge of this defense. You're giving up almost six yards of carry by opponents when they run outside of the tackles. Everybody's taking note. Dart. Right down the middle, and the catch is made by Jordan Watkins, and the Rebels are threatening again. And they're attacking those young linebackers. Allen was in coverage, but talking about Watkins, who is so dependable, got right behind the young freshman, and a great throw by Dart. Judkins cuts it back. That's two 33-yard pass plays already by Ole Miss. Yeah, and, and I think it's a quarterback that's seeing the field really well, and he's complimented by running the football. Set it in the open. We're going to keep talking about it. Dart's going to get a lot of attention tonight, but it's Junkins. It's the offensive line, and it's the running game. Because you create one-on-one -on -one chances for Dart with three really good receivers and a tight end that can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Georgia's Achilles heel for question is the secondary, especially the corners. Dart keeps it. Pitches to the sideline. Fighting back. Trying to get near the ball is Dayton Wade, and he draws a flag. Julian Humphrey, one of the corners. It's a question mark tonight. The Rebels think they can attack a couple of these Bulldogs corners. Yes, they're going to go after 6 and 12 when they get them one-on-one, -on -one, and they think Watkins and Harris and Wade can win. He's beaten there. Defense number 12. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot includes an automatic first down. Yeah, they grabbed the arm and he turned Wade, and that's going to draw the flag most of the time. Not every time, but most of the time. Really smart by Lane Kiffin to find matchups that he feels like he can win. Going after the young linebackers here, going after the corners. They know that they can attack 6 and 12. They both have bright futures, but they're young players. They're Jamon Dumas Johnson, the leader that they're missing tonight in the middle of that defense. Judkins bounces it again. This time the dog's pursuit is excellent. And Bowler, the safety, flies up to grab him behind the line. That's a good job of getting off blocks. Watch the left side. Look at the pursuit. Look at this defense fly. Tyke Smith. See Humphrey there. And then Bowler ends up cleaning it up. That is a fast defense. So while you do want to run out on the perimeter, it's better to go outside initially and then put that foot in the ground and then get north and south. Can't get a good look at which Bulldog defender is down on the far side of the field after that tackle. Looks like it might be Julian Humphrey. Number 12, yeah. Well, we've seen fireworks from both offenses here. We have to, we have to do a fire drill. We have to get Mark and, and Mike to shift out of the formation to the right. And now we're ready to go. And now, now we can snap things. Oh, <laughs> it, it, 
is this what you expected? Georgia's defense has been vulnerable earlier in games, but Ole Miss with an almost perfect run pass mix so far, moving it quickly. I, I just wondered coming in, could they win the line of scrimmage? Could they run the football? And they've been able to do that. They've been able to put Dart in favorable matchups to win with his his receivers. Georgia has five stars everywhere. When I say that they're a potential Achilles heel, it's more about 12 and six just being young. Lasseter three on the other side is outstanding but you got young linebackers forced to play you got some young corners if you give dart time to throw with his accuracy and with the weapons they're going to win some matchups rebels better keep scoring by the way because georgia has moved quickly down the field for touchdowns and a couple possessions here all right let's get mark and mike shift back in fellas back, in, back, back to the base here formation we here we go it's a tight booth here oh, <laughs> if you saw what had to happen just so we can you can look at our faces i'm, I'm definitely not worth it no no Keep an eye on Humphrey. Yeah, hold him that left arm as he comes off, grimacing. So the Rebels are set up at second and 11 after the loss of the 16. Well, Lane Kiffin right now, Charlie Weiss Jr. just feeling how to attack. It's one of Lane Kiffin's great traits as a play caller, just that feel to find the weakness. Three scoring tight end back in the game to the left. Receivers are bunched to that side. Trey Harris, their top receiver, singled off to the right. See, Georgia react. That's the thing. Communication. Good job by Starks. Get everybody on the same page. Keeper. Dart. Follow him in his blocks. Runs down inside the five. This is what he does. Very strategic and effective running. And when they motioned out, they shifted out, and he saw Georgia react. Lane Kiffin says, okay, we got the numbers right. Let's run the quarterback counter. And in first and goal, they'll play with tempo. Clogged middle. Doug can stop at the line. Interesting to watch Doug because he, he knows when to, to pick his spots. He's scrambled for a whole bunch of first downs this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Out of the red zone, he's good. Yeah, and watch this. You just follow the left guard and the left tackle. You got the numbers. You get behind those big guys. And at 6'2", 220, he's going to run. And he's going to run like a, like a running back. Remember, he plays quarterback like a linebacker. Well, the Rebels on the move. They'll be on the doorstep as we begin the second quarter here in Athens. 14-7 Georgia back after these messages. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime. Ole Miss set up at the five here. Second and goal. Love the poise that Dart played with in that first quarter. It's a tough atmosphere. I'm sure you can tell at home the SEC on a Saturday night is always wild. And especially in here at Athens tonight. He is playing with tremendous poise. Seven of 11 and a couple of key runs. There's another keeper. Patiently cuts back. They were ready for him that time, and he's wrestled down. And C.J. Allen, one of those talented freshmen, filling in tonight. Yeah, that, that patience. He's allowing the left side, the pullers on that counter to get around. Quincy McGee and the big tight end pre-scored who's great to see him back after he had to go off the field He's such a threat at tight end He's gonna bring the big former tight end at Auburn and now DN here JJ Pegues into this lineup Big 315 pounder Georgia shuffling around trying to get lined up here Judkins is the back they got a big fella split out left Judkins takes it, makes a cut, flag down. He scores standing up. The flag is in the end zone. I think Georgia may, with all that confusion, may have had 12 men on the field. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 players on the field. The penalty is claimed. Fine. The result of the play is a touchdown. Chris, I got to go back. I'm, I'm not blaming it all on Jamon Dumas Johnson, but there, there's the frustration right there. He's, he's trying to get these young players, that's Damian Wilson, to understand when you're on and when you're off. And Ole Miss just doing a funky formation. The big man, Eli Acker, <laughs> lined up as a receiver. I, I don't know if he was a threat in the perimeter, but, it, but it dis, it affects, they got discombobulated. Yeah, it affected communication. You're calling some names. And even hardcore Georgia fans are saying, wait, he's in there? Yes, yes. So two touchdown runs for Judkins. Busiest back in the SEC. This was easy. Yeah, here. 12 men on the field and four stills able to get behind those blocks and then get north and south. Kidman. Matty, thank you. 14 apiece here. 
Another SEC opponent has come in here and says we're not intimidated by the big winning streak for the Bulldogs, and they have battled. Sets of Bennett honored. That's the Burlesworth Trophy. Goes to the top player who was a walk-on to begin the career. He won it twice. Brief visit with him on the field beforehand. So we're pulling for him. I mean, one of the most decorated players, not just in Georgia football, but those back-to-back -back national championships. Him right there at the helm, doing so many things and proving so many people wrong, including a lot of his own fans. Carson Beck, great job this year, stepping in to Stetson's big shoes. Hands off to Milton. Georgia backs can run hard too. They got a bunch of guys on both sides who make it hard to get him to the ground. This is where it gets fun. Starting the second quarter, offense is moving the ball up and down the field. Now you're, you're Pete Golding. You see what you're up against. Now you got to make in-game adjustments. Now you got to find a way to slow down this running game. You got to get Carson Beck into third and long to try to affect him. The same thing for Georgia with Glenn Schumann trying to come up with answers. It's tough when they get seven on the first down, and here goes Milton again. Just bolting for a quick first down just for fans to understand we get so caught up in the game but these defenses are trying to make adjustments they're communicating there's so much going on because what you're doing is not working Glenn Schumann's at the bottom of that he's got a grease board he's going all over all, all kinds of things what's working hey okay let's try this so constant communication and this has been a real strength of Schumann's and Georgia's defense throughout the year fifth year as DC for Schumann on the staff here for Eight years. All eight years for Smart. Beck. McConkey. So good after the catch. That time the Rebels surround him and he actually loses a yard after making the grab. Dejan Anthony got him down. Yeah, and, and you see the movement here and the movement here from Bowers takes the linebacker and just clears him out. He's gone. Super easy for Carson Beck. And again, Bowers, just his presence. There's so many eyes on 19 in red. And he hadn't made a play yet necessarily with his hands on the ball, but he's affecting this defense and opening up other opportunities for its teammates. Bowers motions in now as a blocker in this running play to Milton, who moves the six again into Ole Miss territory. The physicality of this Georgia running him again. They don't have a lot of home runs, they have a lot of runs between. 10 and 12 yards and 20 yards. They chew it up pretty good. Yeah, they do. And, it, and, and that offensive line just beats down on a defensive line when they start running downhill. They take your will is what happens. And then it puts Carson Beck in, in such a great spot with the receivers that he has. It's not just Bowers. It's not just McConkey. This guy spreads it around to everybody. Bowers comes in tight. And there is his first touch. Slips a tackle and Brock Bowers, welcome back to college football, picks up about seven on that first down play. Well, there, there you go. You want to know how the ankle would hold up? Crowd reacts. Little hide route, get him the ball in space, and this is what we wanted to see. Little jump cut, that's who he is. This is beautiful. Hands catch, and you see the elusiveness. And he takes a hit at the end of this. He's the leading receiver on this team, even though he's missed the last two games. His 42nd catch. Off the play fake. Back launching downfield to McConkey, who comes back and grabs it. McConkey jitterbugs down to the two yard line. Underthrown, but McConkey found a way into space. Uh, Deontay Prince, no man's land. Little stutter and go. Oh my gosh, is he beaten? He's very fortunate that ball came out just a little bit late. Great adjustment back, man. This kid's like a backyard football player. Return punts. He was a punter, quarterback, running back, safety. Did everything in high school. One of the more natural players I think we could see in this sport this year. Got a 41-yard chunk to set up this first and goal. Edwards knocked down after a short gain, short of the goal line, about a foot short. Yeah, he's his great personality, McConkey. Just an enjoyable guy to be around. He's always smiling. You can see the rapport that he has with Carson Beck. His teammates love this guy. And he had that same rapport with Stetson Bennett. Now you see it with Beck. Edwards. 
And Georgia muscles in to reclaim the lead. Two for Judkins for Ole Miss. Two now for Edwards and the Dogs. Such an advantage for Georgia. They get inside there, and then you just you know it's coming, but you just can't stop. Look at the, the, the humanity. It's almost like watching the Philadelphia Eagles with Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson and company leading the way. You know it's coming, but you just don't have the manpower, even with numbers up there, to slow them down. Philadelphia Bulldogs, right? They're, they're, they're <laughs> That's right. Five Georgia players right. on the Eagles defense. That's right. And the Eagles are off this week, so some of the guys have Nolan. come back around. Nolan Smith here. Yep. Uh, Guest picker today. Dogs, 210 total yards, three touchdowns on the first three drives. Back in front by seven. But working in the ACC network, pretty courageously battling Parkinson's. Wish him the best. Absolutely. One of the great guys in the business. No doubt. So many years in Tallahassee, and then, like you said, he came in here and took Georgia back to where they belong. Zirkel's boot moves again in the back of the end zone. Talked about Kirk, this Ole Miss up tempo offense. When they get the first first down, they can crank the tempo. The middle drive there was stalled at the Georgia 40. The other two were touchdowns. Yeah, you get into plus territory, came up a little short of that fourth down. Look at Charlie Weiss Jr. Him, just watching him tells you how they call plays. And we should almost some point tonight watch how he does that after the ball is placed and how quickly he's already communicating to get that play called in. Even Lane Kiffin has told me when it comes to Jeff Levy and Kendall Bryles and watching Charlie Weiss, it's almost like he, he's like, they, people think I'm a savant. These guys that do this quick huddle stuff, they're the savant, the up-tempo offenses. There's that Georgia stem before the snap. Ole Miss doesn't get the penalty, but they get home on the sack. The ball comes out, knocked loose. C.J. Allen and Tramel Walther got him. Well, Stackhouse wins with his hands. Great job in the middle. He had the big interception to seal the win last week against Missouri. It is a monster, 320 pounds. That ball did come out. Jeremy James jumped up yep. to avoid the turnover. Not on schedule now, Kirk, second and 20. Oh. Man coverage took away every receiver and allowed the big man Stackhouse to get home. First sack for either side tonight. And the crowd has come to life. Dart took a peek downfield and then just gets swallowed up by Walter at the line of scrimmage. This is the Georgia defense in this series. These fans are used to seeing now. Uh, it, what a job here. You're right. It, it, what a get off there. Ole Miss just overwhelmed. First time we've seen it tonight. Crowds really into the game right now. And the offensive line losing that battle. And I think it's just a quickness up front, especially on that last play by Walthour. Terry and Ingram Dawkins in there. We got the pass rushers in on third and 20. And then just hand it off. That's kind of a, you got us this series. Judkins grabbed by Dame, or Damon Wilson. A three and out for the Rebels. Backwards three and out. That's what Kirby Smart, Glenn Schumann, when we talked about, they go to the sideline, they try to make adjustments. Well, that adjustment is just... We're going to be better than you at the line of scrimmage on this series. Three straight plays. The D-line dominates. Frazier is in the punter. It's a low boot. And a flag is down. They hit him after the punt. Muse made the fair catch. And we'll check There's the contact. There's no foul for running into the kicker. The kicker was outside the tackle box. First down, Georgia. Well, he's an Aussie. And if you roll out and get out of the traditional punter's position, they can knock you down. They did. So no flag. It was a, a low boot of 47 yards. So Georgia takes over. Holly? Well, guys, tomorrow on ABC and ESPN, there's a women's college basketball doubleheader. One Eastern on ABC, Maryland takes on South Carolina. Then it's UConn versus NC State at 3 Eastern and at 5 p.m. Eastern here on ESPN. Indiana plays Stanford. All of these games are also streaming live on the app. I am going to the UConn-NC State game. I can't wait to see Paige Becker's back. AZ Fudd, they are at full strength, and UConn making some. Is that upset alert for the number two team, you think, in Raleigh? 
I don't think it's upset okay. alert. I, th I think they're in good shape. But South Carolina, you want to tune into that one, too. They have the best freshman in the country. Malaysia made a big splash in Paris this week. Ali never Con. takes a day off. No. In Paris. No. Are you kidding me? No. Hoops tomorrow. Well, UConn number two on the road early. So Georgia trying to make it a fourth straight drive to the end zone. And Beck across the middle. And there's Bowers. He was pretty well covered, but he found some space and moves it inside the Rebels 45. Yeah, he, he can beat man, and he can also settle into that soft spot in the zone. Safety sinks. Now he just settles. It's a nice little option route to be able to give him a chance to either get upfield or settle right there. He comes back to the ball beautifully. And Carson Beck has got to love to see his guy running the football. Love that play call, too, on first and ten. They've been running so much. 19 yard chunk there for number 19. Georgia, by the way, averaging almost 13 yards per play. Is that good on offense? I think that's pretty good. 21 points in All start. All 19 pins. plays. Everybody move with the center. <laughs> Five yard penalty remains first down. The leader, Big Seb Van Pran, veteran guy who's played in so many big games, just didn't snap the ball. They get behind the sticks. Don't you feel like this is a pivotal point in the game? Georgia went right down and kind of body blowed them with their offensive line scored then their defensive line took over now you got Ole Miss's defense back out there on the field down seven I think you're right I think Mike Bogo they, they sense it this is attack mode you get Bowers involved he gets a chunk play the penalty moves him back and the short gain make it second and 13 right. here it's a chance for this Rebels defense yeah, you, you just can't get behind the firepower of Georgia and put yourself in obvious passing situations against that defense. The Ole Miss defense, see, three times, three touchdowns on three drives. They've got to step up here and make a play. Haven't got Georgia to third down yet. This could be an opportunity. He's showing pressure there. That's why he's hesitant. Lake clock at two. Beck coolly checks it down and finds Edwards who spins in the first down territory there. Looks like he's going to go out of bounds, but spun in front of DeAndre Prince. Beck sees this. He says, all right, I'll just have an answer for that. Go ahead. Bring that blitz. It's almost like a, just a quick hop out in the flat. No problem. You get the ball out to Edwards in space. No longer behind the sticks. You study all these analytics for quarterbacks, all these different categories. Beck is very good against the blitz this year, in part because Georgia picks up the blitz so well. Dylan Bell in the backfield. Beck keeps it. Little trickery there, and he's just going to roll for about seven yards. They have their foot in the gas here, don't they? They do. Yeah, they're they're in attack mode right now. And, and you know, I, I've been really impressed with what he can do, Carson Beck. This is Pete Golding trying to communicate with his defense, but Beck. He's not Stetson Bennett with the speed, but he can run enough. There's seven yards on first and ten. Eight different times he has scrambled for a first down. Yeah. So again, it's it's tactical. It's not electric, but effective. Edwards had grabbed him around the ankles. Well, he is made by Tennyson. A lot of movement from Ole Miss all year, and that's how they're going to have to to win tonight. They don't have the size to match up with Georgia, so what do you do? You you, you do your own version of stemming and slanting. Finally, get them to a third down and short. And the way Georgia's playing right now, I'm sure they feel that this is four down territory anyway. Milton is the back. He's got the ball and he's got a first down hammers down into the red zone. It's about all you can do is put nine defenders up close to the line of scrimmage. Ernest Green the left tackle seals that and it just opens up for the big fella Kendall Milton easy first down. One of the drawbacks of Ole Miss's own offense being up tempo is when it doesn't work and you go off the field after a three and out. You put that tired defense right back out on the field. It only took the first sack of the game to really disrupt things. For Ole Miss, the last possession. Bowers is a blocker from McConkey on the edge. 
And Ladd dances around, finally knocked down by Tennyson. And Lane Kiffin knows that. I mean, that's been the tough part. The season for Pete Golding, they seventh highest in the entire country. They've been out of the field. And that's a reflection of their own offense. So when it's working, it's you marvel at it. You know the, how fast they're able to execute. But when you go off the field, that tired defense gets back out there. And it's tough when you're not good in the situational things like like red zone and and third down. Milton runs through a tackle, shows his power, his first and goal. And Xavier Harris slips his block. Watch his penetration by 51 right there. But you got to bring him down, right? I mean, you, you've got to bring down this big back. And Milton, how good is it to see him healthy? He's had some injuries this year. He was slowed early. But you can see he is at a different level right now, kind of in his zone. He's battled injuries all year. He saw his dad hanging out with uh, Carson Beck's dad last night. They're yeah. good buddies. Yeah, throw, throw him in. His dad. <laughs> his dad, <laughs> his dad locked his up. Dad is a big guy. His son's got the football. He didn't care. Barreling through Rebels. Touchdown, Georgia. A flex by the red and black. And they stretch the lead. Good double team there on the right side. Tate Ratledge, watch the right guard. Helps there. He tries to get up to the backer, but he just presses the line of scrimmage, gets behind that line, and then works back to his right, just getting the grass. It's, oh, that was powerful. Tennyson tried to knock the ball away, and it was like he was hit by a truck. There's a progressive pylon cam. What's that coming down the track? <laughs> no doubt about that. Beam machine in red and black is running right through the Rebels defense. Four touchdown drives here in the first half, approaching 300 total yards. They're going to review to just make sure that he broke the plane before his knee touched. Mitchell Wilkins is the replay official for this SEC crew. And He's airborne, though. I mean, it looks pretty obvious that. The Lamagne alongside. Let's get an early rep for. One of our veterans that we are saluting tonight. There's the ball breaking the plane. The elbow there, Phil. See the right elbow touch? Watch the right elbow and see where the football is. There's the elbow at the goal line. What do you think, Phil? It's hard to see the football. It is. This is a tough, even though we got a pretty good view here, we can't see the ball when the elbow touches. But it looks to me where he had it, they're going to have to go stands on this and go touchdown. Here's a peek there. Elbow down. That won't show clearly whether the nose of the ball is across the plane, but I, I agree with you. You gotta, you gotta have very clear evidence to take the touchdown away. Exactly. We'll go touchdown. Yeah, I'm with you, Bill. I appreciate the army, the army hoodie that you're wearing tonight. Is that, is that a vintage piece that you got on? <laughs> no, hey, I'm glad I brought it, especially on today. It was a little chilly and damp up here, so it is. It's Looking coming sharp. handy. Looking sharp. Thank you. But Georgia in the red zone. After the review, three the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. You can tell these backs they're feeding off each other Edwards and Milton healthy they're both really tough physical guys who each average more than five a carry hard to bring down it, having those guys behind an offensive line that's getting healthier Bowers coming back down the stretch run hard to beat this team a different offense don't judge Georgia on who they've been the first half of the season you start judging Georgia right now now that they're healthy. They're like Michigan, right? They had a weak yeah. schedule strength. Who they played? They're starting to play people. Yeah. And they keep beating people. Yeah, those unbeaten teams, they they were tested a bit. Washington were certainly tested. The Canes hung with the Knowles, but Florida State continues to chase a perfect season. And this kick will not go out of bounds, but be grabbed by Bentley inside the 10. And oh a flag comes out. The Rebels will be backed up. The flag is way up at the 32 yard line. So this may further back them up if it's on Mississippi. At the distance, put the ball at about the five yard return, line. Holding, receiving team number 16. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. The first down, Ole Miss. Well, Timeout. invading Ugga's home turf, Kirk, 
Your guy, Ben, came here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't meet, though, right? No, I tried to get him to hook up, but Uncle didn't come down till late. You ben, tell me Ben will scrap. Yeah, he does. He, li he likes to scrap a little bit. There he is. Oh, he's, <laughs> it's nice to me. <laughs> Taco Bell Live My Student Section of the Year contest continues. Demo the Taco Bell app. The students, uh, they may have won the body paint contest. They are fired up. That's right near this Ole Miss offense as they begin from the five. It's loud in here. Dart from his end zone. Throws his short dart, and the catch is made by Harris. Holly? Well, guys, Kirby Smart has talked about the lack of depth on this defense, and it's getting worse tonight. Their defensive tackle, Warren Brinson, is out with a left calf strain, and backup safety Julian Humphrey is not going to return with a left shoulder issue. They do have some depth. Judkins runs for a first down. The guy they call Pop. Jamon Dumas Johnson is a key part of this defense. He had a rod inserted in his arm. They hope to have him back for the postseason. And yeah. They make that playoff run. Yeah, and in, in, in the meantime, these young linebackers are going to play and, and going to have to grow up right now. C.J. Allen is out there. They're going to get better with each rep. It's not about talent. It's about experience. You lose a, a, a real leader. Well, Dart now some breathing room. Checks it down to Judkins. They come up and knock him down right at the line. That was Kamari Lassiter and Smile Munden. A minute 30. Keep in mind, Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. So this is an important end to this first half. Georgia's defense only allowed 16 points all year in the third quarter. So you don't want this game to get away from you. Almost okay working clock. Yeah, no urgency for Kiffin. And now Dart will throw down field. Launched and intercepted. Javon Bullard tracking the ball from his safety position with the first takeaway tonight. Well, I think he had Dalen Everett beat. His place is coming unglued. He gave a little shoulder to get six to bite. But he underestimated the quickness and the range of Bullard, who's covering over the top to take care of six. Tries to squeeze it in there. Look at Glenn Schumann in the background. He gets airborne himself. Just talked about be careful into the first half. You're better off trying to almost just work the clock. Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. Now they're thinking six more points. Second pick for Bullard. You saw Schumann, Will Muschamp, glasses flying off his head. You know Kirby was jumping around there, and he's got the shoulder pad savage. But Bowler's known as a, a thumper, but uses his eyes and shows his range and instincts to come up with that pick. Yeah, picks in back-to-back -back games now. Now they really smell blood. A minute to go, all three timeouts to work with, and back back to throw. Dumps it down to Edwards. Short gain to the 41. Remember Ole Miss. Coming into this game, they've, they've been very effective at, at getting after the quarterback. And number seven in the entire country with 31 sacks. They've been not been able to get into that backfield tonight very much. Yeah, they gave up three sacks last week. The Dogs O-line yeah. did to Missouri. That's the most this season. Good protection tonight. And Beck, as you said, gets the ball out of his hands very quickly. And they're running the football. It's very good rhythm right now. And the offensive line's had a great night. Edwards again gets a big block on the edge from Marcus Roseby Jack Saint. There's a flag down there and another one in the secondary. Maybe it was too good a block. Yeah, he was right. That's where the flag came in. He's a wide receiver that Kirby Smart really respects. Number one, does all the dirty jobs. Well, the defense. Veteran. Yeah, he is. Walton reacted Holding so quickly. Offense that, number one. Yeah, they got it. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Too aggressive on the edge. Yeah. Just reacts. Watch how quickly the defender sees it. He's going to go try to make a play. It was just great reaction from Walton. Probably you're better off just trying to maybe screen him instead of trying to make the block. And he's that's what he's known for: his leadership and his his willingness to be a great blocker out on the edge. Also has 21 catches. So that backs it up into Georgia territory now. Ball back at the 48, second and 17. Still those three timeouts.
Bowers off the slot left. Beck on a tunnel screen. Dominic Lovett. Stiff arm dragged down back in Ole Miss territory by Trey Washington. They seem likely to spend the time out here. Or will they? Uh, now he says timeout. He noticed yeah. that the, some seconds ran off there. Well, no, let me get the timeout. No, no. I, I thought on. he said, I saw, no. read his lips and he said timeout. They don't spend one. I don't know why. Down inside of 20 seconds. Catch made. And Lovett gets down. That's inside the 30. Down to just 12 seconds. I'm confused by the clock management there, frankly. Yeah, this is an example, though, of how they spread you around and, and find ways to get others involved. Lovett, the transfer from Missouri, is known for kind of like McConkie on the other side. Works the middle of the field and so quick after back to back play, so quick after the catch. And you're okay. right. I mean, now, now 12 seconds. I mean, they really let a lot of time running down, and, and with all three timeouts, they could be sitting there maybe 25 seconds to go instead of 12 had they yep. spent one. Ultra reliable kicker is Peyton Woodring. Hit from 47 in pregame, so they're close already. 13 straight. Freshman from Louisiana. See Kirby there talking to Dejon Edwards. 30. Beck in great rhythm, Kirk. 11 straight completions. Only had the one incompletion tonight. It's a pretty good first half for him. 13 of 14 for 214 and a touch. Let's see what they do. They're in field goal range. You They've spread, got the timeouts. You spread them out. You, you go four verts, you know, and find, see how the defense reacts. And they love the creases. They love to hit the seams. Conkey and Bowers are to the left. Beck is looking instead to the right. Fires right down the seam, and it's incomplete. And intercepted. Did it? Yeah, ball got the tipped. The hands of Dejan Anthony. The A ball, takeaway. Yep. Ball, ball's thrown late. Tries to squeeze it in and it hits the hands of Lovett and then goes right into the air. They're fortunate to come up with that interception. You had Saunders in coverage, but the ball hits the hands of the receiver. Lovett. He had him beat at about 15 yards downfield, but he waited. Made it much tougher of a throw. So they miss an opportunity there. So the takeaway by the Rebels. Keep this lead at 14 of the break. Saunders in coverage there. He, I said, you know, you, you have a very famous gentleman who was my mentor, our yeah. great friend John. Yeah. I used to tell people he was my grandfather. <laughs> exactly. He is not, but I enjoy the story. <laughs> so it, it could have been even worse. The dogs were, were barking there and moving, and they get a little lackadaisical with the clock management and the takeaway by Anthony keeps the lead at 14. But what a display by the Georgia offense and, and the word he kept saying was resiliency in game adjustments. That's their strength as a defense. The thing that he and Clint Schumann are most proud of. And we saw that from the first quarter to the second quarter tonight. Giffen's defense will be on the field having to get a stop to begin the second half. Georgia up by two scores. Let's get to Kirby's reaction to the first half with Holly on ESPN. Part of Veterans Week on ESPN, presented by USAA. The SEC East champion, Georgia Bulldogs, overwhelming offensive display. Chris Kirk and Holly back with you, averaging 10 yards a play. Now, Pete Golding and the Rebels defense, he knows what they're up against. He was a coordinator at Alabama for all those heavyweight matchups. What can he do, Kirk, beginning right now when Georgia goes on offense? If he could pull a couple of the red jerseys over here <laughs> in the second half on that defensive line, that would help. But I think the big thing is he came in trying to be a bend but don't break defense tonight. He's going to have to get more aggressive, which is it's either going to work out or you could potentially give up some big plays. Here's the mark of a fighter moment brought to you by Modelo. And this is what we're talking about is you're overmatched up front. Georgia's doing a good job. Save your trust leading the way there. Some good blocks. But a tight end there, Oscar Delp, just really getting manhandled into this second quarter where things started to change. And not only that, between Edwards and Milton, good tough running right here to end that drive. 
with a touchdown by Kendall Milton. So it's been a little bit of everything from Georgia. We didn't even talk about Carson Beck, 13 of 15, 214 yards. So very balanced approach. Did have the one pick at the end of the half off the carom there. His first turnover in the last three games. Beck on the move and almost threw another pick. Boy, tried to get the ball to Ra Ra Thomas. DeAndre Prince came back and had his hands on the ball. But Prince made a good play on that. Undercuts that throw. I think he may have predetermined where he wanted to go with his football. I think he thought seven was going to continue downfield, but instead he comes back. That's just having your eyes on a quarterback. And what he's telling Lovett is, hey, I'm trying to bring you back because of that coverage. Look at me. Second and ten run to Edwards. Continue to see an aggressive approach. I thought they were not aggressive enough, frankly, at the end of the half. They let some seconds tick down, ended up with an interception to close out the half. But they know they can move the ball and go up three scores here. It's going to be very, very tough for Ole Miss to find a way back into this football game. Yeah. Boy, Mike Bopo had such a luxury as the play caller this year. There he is. We Replacing Todd Monken who did such a good job, you know, they throw an incompletion they come back and run the football now You're sitting there at third and five Monken calm plays for the high-powered oh. Ravens offense oh. Three receivers bunch to the right he throws back to the left It's a fastball off the hand of Bell and it's a quick stop for this Rebels defense yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an important yeah. step try to get back into it Yeah, the first down play was a big play by Prince and then they run the football in third and five and There's Beck just trying to make a play and I, I love that he wants to get the ball out quickly But that time Bell just didn't get his eyes turned around quickly enough that ball was coming quick in a, in a hurry He was a high school pitcher as a sophomore he was kind of modest. I threw it like 94, 95. <laughs> His dad says he got a whole lot of letters from Major League Baseball teams. He he had some offers to play SEC baseball, but he said once Alabama and others start to offer him in football, it better concentrate on quarterback. Broke the streak of 11 straight completions, and now Brett Thorson gets some action tonight. They haven't returned a punt against him all season long. Another fair catch made at the 28 after a 41-yard boot. Holly. Well, Lane Kiffin told me they've been trying to get some rhythm in that offense, but the injuries on the offensive front are starting to really add up. He pointed out that they are on their third right tackle, and not having that consistency on the front is impacting their offense right now. He said, we're going to have to go to the quick throw game, be very quick and decisive with our throws because they don't have the protection and the continuity that they need up front right now to be firing on all cylinders. That's a good point, Holly. Judkins made some traction earlier. He does have a couple of touchdown runs, but the running game really slow down in the second quarter. You feed him here. There wasn't much room in the middle. He kind of plows ahead for a few. Yeah, that's tough. That's that's tough to do where he was having his success was on the outside stretch play and not bouncing it too far but getting outside and then feeling it and then getting north and south. Remember we said in the open if they're going to compete number four is going to have to have a night. Dart dodges pressure and is out dragged down. C.J. Allen, the hyped freshman, makes a play. They put the center in a tough spot because a blitz here, a late blitz here, and watch this. He starts to his left, and then he's getting back to his right, and both the linebackers end up coming in to sack the quarterback. Let's see why. They're so excited about that freshman Allen. Dart incomplete trying to find Jordan Watkins covered by Takey Smith and it's a quick three and out for the Ole Miss offense. Well, it was all about the offenses in the first half and here a couple of three and outs. Ole Miss when they finally get a stop man, their own offense has got to capitalize and unable to do so. That felt really important right there. And now it's a fake. Zen takes off, and he just rolls. Nobody paid attention to the punter. A flag is out. A couple of them very late. That looked like it was a scuffle along the sidelines. Giffen can't believe it, but they Georgia just peeled back and forgot about Zen. 
just nobody on the edge. You know, maybe Lane Kiffin, who got so excited. I don't know if he ran into an official. I mean, he's over there jumping up and down because he sees it's going to work. He was maybe it's paint, just, though. Yeah, he, he got it. He's going it, to maybe it's just going to be a warning. The results of the play is a first down for Ole Miss. After play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number nine. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced. It'll be first and ten for Ole Miss after enforcement. So the fake is successful, but it does back him up at 15 yards of field position. Hugs all around for the Aussie. Now, listen, you, you laugh about the Australian punters, but yeah. they're, they're hey. used to running around in yeah. that sport down there. If, if you see it, take it. I, I don't see a number nine on the field. I think it was number 12. They grabbed a face mask and, and threw a guy. I saw that on that last replay. Well, they watch football down in Australia. It's the wee hours, but they enjoyed that run by Frazier. But the penalty, instead of being in midfield, backs him up to the 35. See if that's a spark they needed. Judkins. Again, it, it, it's the middle, but there's just not much room. Walther clogging things up. Lane Kiffin rolling the dice here. We've seen him do that. The things you have to do to get back into this game. So they pick up enough yards, go backwards after the, the dead ball penalty. But they keep the football. Poise in this offensive line and Jackson Dart being tested in front of this crowd. Patchwork offensive line. Second and eight handoff. I don't know. There's just nothing there. Walther back to back plays just swarming. Judkins sets up a third and long. That defensive line, they're just eating up those back, or eating up those offensive linemen. There are very few people over the last three or four years. That can run the football between the tackles against Kirby Smart in this Georgia defense. I know Jalen Carter's not there. They don't have maybe the superstar oh, but they, first rounders, but they got a lot of solid they have dudes. Size, and they can eat the blocks. They rush four, Dart retreats, and now lofts it downfield, and it's off the outstretched hands of Jordan Watkins, Bullard in coverage, and it's fourth down again. Uh, he, he had a one on one matchup and he had it against Bullard who had a big interception. But he has to throw it because of the pressure off of that right foot. It's like he does stay in bounds. I thought initially maybe he had stepped out but it, his heel stayed up. You saw the facial expression from Kiffer. They get the stop finally for the first time get the ball back. Then they get the fake punt but the penalty backed him up and killed some momentum. It's an excellent punt. Muse backtracks all the way to the 10. 51 yard boot so he he faked it and he pounds the ball. There's a flag again yeah, right at the line of field. Scrimmage. And Kiffin knew that how important that that sequence was. Let's see if they make him repunt it. Could just take the five yards at the end of the return. Illegal formation. Nah, I'm going to make a repunt. More than four players were in the backfield. The five yard penalty will be enforced to the previous spot. Repeat, four down. So Mazin goes back out there. It's been an eventful last few minutes for him. At least we learned he's a pretty good athlete. Yeah. And Georgia will have some things to talk about in their special teams meetings about ignoring the punter. So that ball ended up, they would have been at about their own 13 yard line without that penalty. It was a low kick. John Hughes waves a quick fair catch and takes it at the 24. Plus 11. Georgia back to work up two scores. CFP Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Semifinals are in New Orleans and in Pasadena. Stetson Bennett was uh, MVP of just about every playoff game that he played in. It, it, is that good? <laughs> You're the MVP of every playoff game? That's pretty darn good, yeah. And around McConkey gets a chance to crank up the speed. Resets. 
I thought they grabbed his face mask there. That flag comes in late, and that'll tack on 15 more. They love to run this play with McConkey. They've run it in the past with Bowers. Used Delp that time to get out in front. Xavier Harris right there. Well, or did he grab the face mask? Kind of grabbed below it. The flag came out. No he'll pick it up. Mask plays the first down. Appeared to be, but kind of skimmed the bottom there. of it there. Still a first down. Boy, McConkey, and there's NFL scouts here, and there's plenty to look at on this Georgia team, but you really feel like this is a guy that, you know, on Sundays can be really, really effective oh, slot receiver. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he has so many good instincts, reliable. Hunter Renfro's had a good career at that position in the league, but McConkey is a little twitchier, a little yeah. more speed. Yeah. Back off the play fake, right down the middle. Rosemary Jack Saint. Makes the catch and is slung down at the Ole Miss 41 by Anthony. But dogs on the move again. 32 more. So you got a receiver here and a receiver here. And then you need protection. Look at the offensive line. Look at that pocket. And then look at that throw. Great accuracy. And he puts that right on the money. And gives Rosa Mee Jack Saint a chance to do something after the catch. That. Defensive coverage on the back end there just lost with that deep cr with crossers there downfield. Beck gets the rhythm back after three straight incompletions. Looking to throw again on first down. Dodges the pressure in the pocket and takes off. Pretty good acceleration. He runs right near the first down marker. It is a first down at the 32. Now these linebackers, that's the biggest concern, I think, for this Ole Miss defense is. What do we have at our second level? Look how they're just, they're afraid of the deep crossers. Look how far back they are. Backs turned and good recognition by Carson Beck, who again has that athletic ability to take off. And correct. So I thought they were waving the change crew down. Instead, it's about a foot short. And they'll pick it up here. And look out, Milton bolting, gone. Kendall Milton. Has a pair of touchdowns. So does Dejan Edwards. And the dogs beginning to stretch the lead now big time. Watch the right side of the offensive line. And, and just perfect execution here. The big right guard here, 69. Ratledge able to get up to the second level. Man, that was beautiful. The safeties didn't feel right. And Milton, not just a powerful back, but has the speed. But just good execution by Georgia's offensive line. Rebels just the one loss this year. They lost in Tuscaloosa by 14. This is the biggest deficit the Kiffin's team has faced. And Georgia continues to be overpowering on offense. Beautiful run pass makes all of it effective. The AP poll era and voted number one in 36. Where's the where's the Pac-12, coach? Yeah, where where is where is uh I'm going to put them in there for myself. I guess they figured that the the Huskies and the Ducks and they might, might cancel each other out. Well, Coach Benny Beerman, 34, 35, and 36, well dressed. Smaller squads back then, two platoon football, right? Man, look, look at these lads. Got to go way back. That's how almost long it's a, been, almost folks. A, almost a hundred years since we've seen this, where you have a chance. And the way Georgia looks now that they're healthy, of course, they're, you got this one, you mentioned at Tennessee, Tennessee loses today, you got Georgia Tech and Alabama in the SEC championship. Judkins had some success in the first half on the perimeter. Let's see if they can get him back out there again. Boulder knocks him down a solid game. What, what makes it amazing is this defense. They've lost 19 defensive players over the last three years to the NFL, eight in a first round. And here they are again. Short game for Judkins. You know, Chris, you don't have Jalen Carter, Trayvon Walker, Devontae Wyatt, Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean, Nolan Smith, Quay Walker. I mean, they've lost so many. It's a big fella, Jordan Davis, but they don't have necessarily the, the marquee names and the, the game records. But man, the scheme, size, athleticism is still there. 
certainly got guys like Kamari Lass that are oh, going to yeah. play at the next level. Dumas yeah. Johnson well, got is out, of course. Young players that are eventually going to be that next wave of superstars, but this is a team defense. And Durant and Watkins on third and three, not going to get there. Wrestled down by C.J. Allen. The freshman's been strong tonight. Filling yep. in for Dumas Johnson. And here's going to be a future superstar who right now is learning on the fly. He takes on this would-be block and just goes right through Bentley and makes that play. Kiffin's putting the ball game right here. Fourth down and two at his own 33. Down by three scores. Funky formation dart under center. And they pitch it on the edge to Bentley. There's a flag down. Bentley turns the corner, but that thing never got started. Now we'll see if he decides to punt after the penalty. Yeah, he's going to have to. Got a hold on the right side there. Illegal snap. Oh, Offense. I thought we had a hold. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. He came up quickly in that weird formation. And it, yep, the false yeah, snap, yeah. yeah. A little move, and then it's a top 79 trying to help with the edge right there. He actually grabs on, so they don't worry about that hold with that procedure call, but they move him back. It's Reese McIntyre, who's a backup center again. Shuffling things around, didn't have Pettis tonight. They got Jaden Williams go out with an early injury, so health is serious concern up front, and it's the wrong team to face, but that's your reality. Big roll on the punt down to the 23, 49 yards. Holly. You guys saw it on that last series. C.J. Allen, the backup linebacker, number 33. True freshman has been so impressive tonight. Glenn Schumann told me that before the game, he was going to have a talk with C.J. and his other backup, uh, Raylan Wilson, and say, listen, even Rokon Swift and Nicobe Dean, the guys who are so good here, never graded out perfect, not once. You don't have to be perfect tonight. You just have to do your job and really lock it in focus. I love that message to these young guys because they haven't been perfect, but they have been solid. I think we're seeing a star born tonight in C.J. Allen. Yeah, I'm with you, Holly. Remember, he was in for the spring, and it just so they say so mature, and uh, I think we've seen that. He leads him in tackles tonight. How's that for stepping in? Back to the ground game. Milton, his first multi-rushing touchdown game of his career. When they get this running game going and they run that counter and they run the inside zone and you got to start to peek into that backfield and you start leaving yourself vulnerable to these backs and the Bowers and to obviously McConkie and, and company with Beck, with his accuracy, the way he sees the field. I mean, we got to get to Atlanta and see Alabama. It's about the only team that can match up with these guys physically. I don't think Bobo will call 30 consecutive running plays. This is what Jerome Moore did for Michigan today. But he could, and they could still move the ball. It's love it out of the slot. And it's a 10-yard gain in the first end. Here's the one-two punch. Yeah, Milton almost 10 yards to carry. Edwards, the quicker back, not a bad night himself. This Georgia offensive line, we can talk about all the guys around him. Have not allowed a sack tonight against the number seven team in a country at applying pressure and the eight yards a carry. And they are working together. Stacy Searles, that offensive line coach, got to be proud and happy that they're healthy and they're playing well. Great continuity. Beck flips it down. Left alone is Edwards. And he's down near the 40, a flag out late in the play. Bowers tonight, Kirk, all eyes on him at a short catch early. Then made another catch for yeah, Kirby, 12 yards. Kirby said we're going to see how he's doing. Offense number 19, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That was on Bowers at the line of scrimmage. When, when he was going out for a route, he's, he's kind of showing, I'm blocking, I'm blocking. So instead of just kind of coming off, he grabs that jersey and throws him to the ground of Anthony the impressive display of strength but yeah not within the rules and Dejon Anthony playing at Liberty last year transferring to Ole Miss he's thinking um, <laughs> I didn't know tight ends were that big and that fast and now I know 
And that fast healing. And that, that everything. And that powerful. Brad would enjoy seeing a little more for number 19 tonight. See if he does get involved here in the last 20 minutes. Back has all kinds of time. Flips it down short. And it's Oscar Delp did a really good job filling in for the two games when Bowers was out. He's a pretty good athlete himself. Sophomore from coming Georgia. Holly? Well, guys, Lad McConkey's just gone into the injury tent for the Georgia Bulldogs, and this is a bad thing because it's been so exciting to see he and Brock Bowers yeah. on the field at the same time. I saw him get up slow after the first play of this drive. It looks like a lower leg injury. There was blood dripping down his left calf. Didn't look too serious, but I'll keep you posted. Blood dripping down his left calf. Thank you for painting that <laughs> vivid picture, Holly. A back injury was the issue that cost McConkey early in the season. And now, Lovett running free. Dominic Lovett hurtling down inside the Rebels 25. Well, that's where they attack. McConkey's down, so Lovett has to step up in between those hash marks. It's where Carson Beck picks up a lot of his yards on those seam routes. Open, the middle of that field is wide open. He sees it. And man, he throws that ball so well. You got a flag at the end. 43-yard gain. He was shelved. Late hit. Defense number three. It's a frustration penalty from Dejan Anthony. Your friend from Liberty. wasn't wasn't that rough, but it was unnecessary, Bill. Yeah. Look at look at the middle of that field and look at that football. And now you give a talented a receiver a chance to pick up a lot of yards, make these guys tackle, which has been a problem for him. And there's the push. To be tapped on at the end of the play. Yeah, it was a correct call. It just, like you said, frustration. Set up from the 12. To just about finish off the Rebels here. Now there's just there's just no relief for that Ole Miss front trying to somehow find a way to hang in there and get a stop against this. Yeah. You called it wave of humanity that Georgia throws at you. Right. How about? First and 25, no problem. You know, he, he, he get behind the sticks, no issue at all. When he, when he, when they protect any quarterback, but especially Carson Beck with his accuracy and with the receivers and the way he spreads it around, you're at the mercy of 15. What he wants to do. Now he's so rarely been pressured this season. A few cracks in the past per a week ago. It's been cleaned up tonight. Beck fade and trying to get the ball. Thomas there Prince was in coverage you know I know the quarterback coach down in Jacksonville that, that works with Carson back that's where he's from Denny Thompson he does a, a great job along with Will Hewitt and they've been bragging to me about Carson Beck for the last couple of years and what he can do even though he's had to sit behind Stetson Bennett and they're right I mean we've seen it all year I just love that he waited his turn a lot of these guys had to wait their turn they play with kind of a chip on their shoulder even though they're back to back defending champs. He said, I didn't win that. Yeah. I didn't win that. He's motivated. This team's motivated. Third and seven. I throw the back shoulder of Thomas. It's incomplete. Jamari Walton in coverage. There is no flag in his fourth down. Pretty tight coverage. I think he knows Walton is expecting that back shoulder. You see, Walton starting to kind of work back to the threat of the back shoulder. Bill, what do you think of that one? A flag for pass interference would have been uh, the right definitely call. supported. It was a little jersey grab. I think the folks here agree. So on comes Woodring. He's been kicking extra points tonight for his first field goal attempt from 27. And they'll go into. The stretch run and perhaps deep into the postseason feeling really good about their kicking game. The freshman's done a nice job. The lead 24 now in Athens. Down sets the table for week 10 in the NFL at 10 Eastern time. A Monday night football. Bill's ready to get back on track and, and suddenly the Broncos and Russell Wilson have a little pulse beat the yeah, Chiefs come off a bye week. The Buffalo. You see the cast on ESPN2. You look at his numbers, Russell Wilson, from where he was last year. A lot of people thought, well, that's done. He's 
And he's fit in very nicely with Sean Payton and that new scheme out in Denver. Bentley. Nice to set up the Rebels with some field position dropped at the 28. And this Georgia defense got off to a bit of a slow start, but boy, they have settled in after making some adjustments. For some reason, Ole Miss trying to run between the tackles, which is a no-no, only averaging about two and a half yards a carry. But the young freshman linebackers in for Jamon Dumas Johnson, C.J. Allen, been all over this field, 33, leads the dogs and tackles, and is growing up right in front of us. A five-star true freshman linebacker getting a lot of reps and having a chance to really mature and grow tonight. See those total yards since the first quarter. 36. That's it after 180 in the opening quarter for the Rebels offense. Dart sprints out, gets the corner, doesn't go out of bounds, gets sandwiched, knocked Ooh. down hard. You could hear the pads pop. It was Everett and Loeb who got him in a sandwich. Yeah, Loeb chasing that play from behind 310 pounds. I think the combination of the two that you referenced, Chris, anytime a bit, even though he's a big, strong quarterback, you'd love to see him always get down. You said linebacker mentality. He does weigh 220 pounds, had a chance, though, just to step out of bounds. And yeah, I think Logue's helmet and his helmet hit right there, 96. He's a 310 pound right there. Just all of his momentum goes right into Jackson Dart. It did not look good as he hits the turf right there. Mm. Had a chance to step out, and that would have been the prudent decision. Spencer Sanders, the former Oklahoma State Cowboy, is the backup. He's had limited duty, has played in six games, but he's a guy who has 41 starts in his career, won 30 games in Stillwater for Mike Gundy's team. Dart is still very, very slow to finally sitting up. That's good Great to see. Up, yeah. It would be hard to see him returning to the game, but uh, he is a tough guy. Really is. Yeah. Comes off a, a monster game. He was uh, heroic against AM, 387 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns, a hard fought victory for the Rebels. And he'll be checked out by the doctors and athletic trainers on the Rebels bench. See if he heads into the tent. Yeah, he will. You, what you lose is the, the ability to tack downfield. Spencer Sanders can throw the football. He's 11 of 17 this year. He can run. I mean, he, he's a he's a real threat. Chris talked about his experience there. Almost 10,000 yards through the air. Look at that, 69 touchdowns. So he's a different kind of passer, but definitely has not the power of Dart, but but has some quickness. Hands off to Judkins. They've just not had any success inside, outside the tackles, which has been the weakness of the dogs defense. Oh, as you, they've had success. Yeah, what almost seven yards, seven, yeah. seven yards of carry outside the tackles. But here in these last two or three possessions, it's been mostly between the tackles where they haven't had much luck. There's movement. New quarterback comes in. Another for the most part, the problem for this Rebels offensive line has not been a lack of poise on the road. Start. Offense for 56. Five-yard penalty. Guys doing the Eight best they down. can with the injuries in and out, and shuffling dudes around different positions. Yeah. It's just been protecting against the, the dogs' relentless front. And you got Reese McIntyre right now at center, 56. He's the backup. Caleb Warren, the starting center, he's over at right guard. I mean, they've been shuffling this offensive line almost by the series. I know they cross-train, but it's a tough thing on the road against this group. Sanders, an inaccurate throw, kind of a low pitch to Trey Harris. Lasseter in coverage, tough guy to beat, and his fourth down. Tough guy to beat and a tough thing to do when you're sitting around for two and a half quarters cold, and you come in and you got to make a throw on third down in about seven or eight against Lasseter. <laughs> Just elite corner coverage. We, we don't talk about him a lot because Frankly, opponents don't target him a lot. They go at other guys and kind of leave, they'll leave number three side alone. Muse along the sidelines. 
Makes a cut. Kai Muse in space. Little guy with a flag down, bolting into Ole Miss territory, but very low kick. And Muse says, I'll take it, thank you very much, but this looks like it's going to come back. Flag was on the far side, right near where the return began. During the return, holding, return team number 27. The penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Georgia. It's Arian Smith, the wide receiver, who wears 27 on special teams. Kirby has high standards. He's, he's grumpy about stuff. He's, oh, yeah. he's going to be coaching as. As the man that he learned a little bit from, Nick Saban does right to the final play, and you know Kirby knows that everybody's going to be patting him on the back. He won the East. Congratulations. Oh, no. Tennessee's terrible. They go up to Knoxville. No, nope. not going to want to listen to it. No. Rat, isn't it rat poison? Can you listen yeah. to that? Yep. Edwards. Short game. And we're back. Holly, what can we learn about the condition of Jackson Dart over there? Well, guys, when he went into the injury tent, I saw him holding his left collarbone, shoulder everywhere. He's come out from there, and now he's being taken into the Ole Miss locker room right now. He does look a little bit dejected. He's walking. It looks like he's not in a ton of pain, but definitely he is a dejected young man as he leaves the field. Yeah, that's if it's a collarbone, that's certainly not good news. And you know, when you play the game, like you're a linebacker and you take your hits. Dylan Bell in the backfield is yeah. back launches downfield and that's Bowers trying to make a one handed catch with Anthony in coverage. Wow. No flag. Wow. I thought I thought that would have been an obvious call. It looks like he grabbed the front of his jersey. Anthony's had a tough matchup. Remember I said the transfer from Liberty said well I didn't know tight ends could be this big and fast. Watch a jersey pull. Man. Brock Bowers doesn't argue hardly ever. He looked around like, uh, can I get a call here? You do whatever you can to try to defend 19, right? So it's third down and seven. Beck escapes, has plenty of space. First down and a lot more. He slides down at the, about the 40 after a 14 yard game. So you're going to show blitz and then you're going to drop. But Carson Beck sees this. And look at that middle open up. Nobody there. Soon teams are going to start to appreciate and respect 15 when he drops back to throw. You got to worry about that big arm. But this kid can run the football and he has good recognition because of the field vision. And he's going to take that on third down all day long. Six four, long strides. He just gobbles up yardage quickly once he decides to take off. I'm bigger than yeah. I think he looks on TV. We visited with him yesterday. Look out, Milton! Foot race. Can they track him down? They finally do. But Kendall Milton, way over a hundred yards on a huge night. These dog running backs, 51 yards more. Watch these combination blocks by the offensive line. Really good job in the interior. Van Brand is able to help out. Van Brand is a leader of that front. They work so well together. This offensive line. I know the backs are getting all the yards, but if I'm Kirby Smart, I'm giving Stacy Searles and this offensive line the game ball. These guys have dominated the point of attack. So many yards before contact. Milton and Edwards be the first ones to tell you, hey, give all the credit to the big fellas up front. Edwards is now in the game. He's got a couple touchdowns as well. Tackled at the seven. It, and it's not just that they're big. <laughs> I know they recruit great players. What, what, what's unique about the offensive line here is how they're in rhythm. They're in sync. They have continuity and they're healthy. Heavyweights in the sport starting to flex. You saw Michigan earlier, Bama this afternoon, Georgia tonight. Headed to the fourth quarter. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime from Athens. Dogs knocking on the door again to build on this lead. Second and seven from the Ole Miss eight.
Milton. They fake it to him. Beck keeps it. Didn't have much space and just slides down at the line of scrimmage. Good decision just to avoid any contact that he doesn't need. Play for this next down. Keep looking out there and thinking. I remember in the free game, the conversation with Holly with, with Kirby about, well, we're going to see how 19 feels tonight. We're going to kind of ease him back and see if how many plays we, we think he can get in. I don't think he's been off the field tonight. I don't think he's missed a snap. He's not a normal human being. No, I think he's Iron Man. Bunch to the left here. Bowers is three receivers. Now motions back into the slot. On third down, Beck looks down the middle. There's Brock Bowers. Touchdown, Dogs. He is Iron Man, as you call him. There's Iron Man right on cue. I love that Beck saw that what he wanted to see. It just the uh, protection up front gets that set. Then he tells Bowers, "Hey Bowers, we got the matchup we want. Come on down. I got everything taken care of. We're gonna do a little little pump, little stutter and go, little pump, and then nice throw. Perfect timing. And finally, 19 gets into the end zone after that layoff. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste." Linebacker was uh, overmatched there as so many are trying to cover number 19. And this display by the dogs. Yeah, Ole Miss, it wasn't the most stout defense, but they did hold Alabama in check. And they won at Auburn, and now the dogs have scored 31 unanswered. Bowers looks back. The third coming up tonight, BYU Iowa State. Now Steve Young's not playing. If he were for BYU, maybe Ty Detmer gets in there for some classic BYU football. <laughs> Texas, meanwhile, off to Iowa State next week. And they host Texas Tech before the Big 12 championship game. Curtis Wilson on the All-State bus, bracing for that ride to Corvallis next week. But what's your All-State good hands on moment today? It's got to be Cody Schrader in this Missouri. It's a good football team that Eli Drinkwitz has. We saw it last week when they came to Athens. Do a good job of running and throwing, just dominates Tennessee. And then the handshake with Eli quick. and Josh Heibel very quick. Remember, Tennessee beat him 66 21 a year ago, so that was payback. Bentley around the left side. Eli's salty in, in, in yeah. a good way. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Talked about the divisions being clinched, Bama emphatically doing so. Georgia goes to Tennessee. The Ramblin' Wreck just down the road in Atlanta to wrap up the regular season. And three weeks from today, the collision that uh, will most likely decide the spot in the playoff as well as the conference championship. Yeah, you and I were talking at the break about the committee watching these kind of games. They saw Michigan look great on the road and take care of Penn State despite all those distractions. Looked like the team that we kind of thought they were and against better competition. Ohio State's up big 38-3 right now. Georgia obviously impressive. Getting tougher and tougher to rank these teams late in the year. Bentley gets a first down. Let me ask you about that. Ohio State you know, had the better resume. That was the justification for making the number one. Now that Michigan has gone on the road and destroyed Penn State, Bama's stepped up, but Georgia undefeated certainly handled a, a top 10 team here tonight pretty easily would there be a, a re reconsideration you think this week at I, the top? you can never tell what the committee looks like I've never had Ohio State up at the top team in my opinion I know the resume is important but for me I've looked at Georgia and Michigan as 1a 1b all year long and I think that just continues at this point to be the case in my opinion I put Ohio State at three or four don't forget about Washington out out west and they keep playing great competition too and they keep winning football games Absolutely. We'll see the Huskies next Saturday night at Oregon State. High snap. Spencer Sanders again is in for Jackson Dart. Knocked out of the game. Tyke Smith brings him down. And the only reason you put Alabama down is, you know, this is a team early in the year. You and I were in Tuscaloosa when they lost to Texas. Next week at USF, they're struggling. They're trying to find a quarterback. And now look at him. Jalen Milrose, one of the great stories of the year. Their defense has grown up. Cannot wait for Atlanta to see Bama and Georgia go head to head. Sanders third and ten escapes long way to go now slings it short pre score and has got the football 
came close to crossing the line of scrimmage, but it's a legal catch for a first down. And that's Spencer Sanders. You feel the difference in the offense. First of all, just handling the snap. They blitz, but he's got not the power, but the quick, the quickness and the twitch to be able to get out of there in a hurry. And then he finds the open big tight end. Boy, these snaps are high. He had to show athletic ability. Went up and batted it down to keep it in play. He actually, Picks up a yard. Like you say, batted it to himself. He doesn't have a chance to secure it, so he just kind of let me try to get a fingertip on that and happen to bring it back down to himself, and then somehow gets a couple yards. Last thing you need against the defense closing in fast is to have to take time collecting the snap. Second and nine. Judkins hit hard right at the 40 and knocked down there. It'll be third down. Dan Jackson on the tackle. Georgia in game adjustments the resiliency that they played with early in this game it looked like we had a shootout I mean remember that Ole Miss scores down scores Georgia scores Ole Miss scores it was like wow this Georgia defense without Jermon Dumas Johnson is going to be in trouble they settled down made the adjustments and they've been a different defense the rest of the game play fake Sanders launches far sidelines a battle for the football Did he come down with that wow Dayton Wade went up and grabbed the one-handed catch over Everett. How in the world did he catch as he throws his right hand up there? Oh, oh my gosh, what a catch. I mean, on the absolute stretch, kind of cups the football he, and brings it he into his chest. It in the air forever. Go back to him again. Guys around college football just do some amazing stuff with these one-handed catches these days. Dude, this is catch of the year, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that, and then he secures it on the landing. Great job there, one nine. Sanders running all the way, spins back out of one tackle, and then gets met by C.J. Allen and Raylan Wilson. Raylan. Both freshman linebackers in there right now. Yeah, Raylan Wilson and C.J. Allen get used to those names. That will be the middle of this defense once Smile Munden moves on. Those guys are future superstars, just young players flying around learning. Tend to an injured Georgia player will step aside. Florida State won a rivalry game. Washington a hard fought victory. Another battle next week for the Huskies in Corvallis. Oregon USC later on tonight. Third and four. Sanders and the Rebels try to make this look more respectable here early fourth quarter. Another high snap. He tried to hand the ball off to Wade in a sweep, but the snap prevented it, and he just has to eat it. Remember the backup center, Reese McIntyre, has been in there for much of the second half with Caleb Warren moving over to guard because they've had some injuries. And that football sails again up high. Sanders, the athletic buddy, but it disrupts the timing. Plays over. He wanted to hand that to Wade on the jet sweep. Couldn't get it to him. So Caden Davis comes in for a field goal attempt. To cut the lead to 28. And he does it. Interesting. Unfortunately, finally to take the three. And in our tape room, George Dunmore joined the military when he was 17, which you could do with, with parents' permission. Thank you, gentlemen, for your Thank service. You. Bill is first class when it comes to no doubt. his specialist duties here in the booth. Fair catch. We've talked a lot about Brock Bowers coming back tonight. He's helped this offense. He takes two safeties here, opens it up for Lad McConkey. So the attention paid to Bowers helps that one. There's that jump cut. Great to see that ankle feeling good. Takes a big hit. This is just uncommon. You don't see a stem like that, that little stutter and go from a tight end at 6'4, 245 pounds. And Kirby's like, dude, who, what, I mean, you just do things every game that I just. I mean, all over. Dominic Rayola, his son, is going to be coming here. Played in the NFL for years. He said, man, 19 does things you just you can't do as a tight end. So like, the NFL is going to fall in love with him soon. Looks like Bowers' night is through. That makes sense. And so is Carson Becks. Carson finishes with another efficient night, 18-25, to 25, another 300-yard game. 
couple touchdowns. Did have the one pick late in the first half, but fourth game with 300 yards passing, and also as a runner, he was effective. Imagine stepping into the shoes of Stetson Bennett after he wins back-to-back -back national championships. Got off to a little bit of a slow start like anybody would. Once they found their identity, new offensive coordinator, had some injuries, and now he's become the strength of how they attack. Now Redbeard, Brock Vandegrift, comes in, the sophomore on a Bogart, Georgia. Holly? Well, guys, just to put a bow on Brock Bauer's night, it's not normal that this young man came back 26 days after that surgery, but he's not normal. His teammate Carson Beck told us in three years that he's been with him, every single time they run a drill in practice, Brock has never lost. He is an un exceptional young man. He never wants to lose, even if it's just a random drill on a random day in practice. It's kind of standard he's set, and him pushing himself helps push this Georgia Bulldogs team. Yeah, he leads, excuse me, with, with deeds, not words. Yeah, I was going to say, he's the quietest guy on the team. I got a hello out of him yesterday. Good job yeah, out I, of that you. Was, that was good work, yeah. This is Andrew Paul. Are you in there pumping turn. iron? Were you moving some iron? I, I was actually coming out of the restroom as he was going in. If you, if you want the full description, hey, Matt, back to you. <laughs> I don't mean to break up this conversation because I love where that was headed, but I do need to interrupt to show you what Jaden Daniels is doing. Goes over 200 yards rushing on this first down and 10 play. This one for 51 yards. He's coming to second player since Johnny Manziel since 2013 to have 200 yards rushing, 200 yards passing in a game. LSU up 31-28. Man, Matt, I didn't That's know. That's crazy. I didn't know if he would play after the hit that he took last oh my week. Goodness. And it's great to see him back. And you can make a case that that guy is playing as well as anybody in the country. 200 rushing yards. Look out. Roderick Robinson has joined the party. Number zero, the freshman running back, shows his burst. And here's a pin and pull to the left here. Watch the 23 and 17. They seal it. And then you got a couple big linemen getting out in front there. Looks like Micah Morris trying to get down there to help out. How about that freshman? Look at those legs. He did weighs 240 out of San Diego. You know, when you don't have him on, you know, you're looking at down at your board and you got like four or five backs listed and here comes old Robinson. They just bring in another one. Yeah, he's the fifth string guy. And I mean, look at the true freshman. Oh. He, he's been in the squat rack already here. Found the weight room. It's hard to miss. It's a pretty huge weight room. They're just adding on too, to everything here. It's the way it goes in the arms race. Yeah, a couple recruits were here pregame too on the field. Is that a couple most, dozen. Is that the most I, I think I've ever seen? Last home game. It's a celebration in Athens, and they'll hit the road to Tennessee, and then, of course, to Atlanta. Lawson Lucky, another true freshman tight end, gets in the game. I think he's the next one. Lawson Lucky is an impressive looking guy at 6'3, 240. You have Oscar Delp. But they, they, you know, you watch the, the teams that recruit tight ends and, and keep them involved in the pass game. You know, and, and you find those guys that can be in line to be physical and help you set the edge and run the football in the outside zone play. And then also get involved in the pass game. It's a real weapon. Now they get another true freshman tight end of the game. A 6-7 Pierce Sperlin, number 88's in there. Cash Jones is the back. He gets a carry. Cash is knocked down the nine yard line. Yeah, they've done a decent job stacking recruiting classes on top of each other. It's it's pretty incredible how how they built this team. You know, you talk about you know the four and five star guys. There are 42 on the roster. That's third most after Alabama, Ohio State, Ole Miss. Has a respectable number of guys who came in tied at 18, four and five stars. That's still less than half of what this Georgia roster has. It's more to it than stars. I get it. But you look at the teams that recruit well, there's a closer and closer alignment to how they do on the field. That's respectable on the left. It's just it not really competitive is. with 42. Yeah. And you could put anybody on that left graphic and. The exception of maybe Alabama. Who, who else would you put up? Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah. Uh, there aren't there aren't many. Fourth and one offense on the field. And they got him to flinch. And that free play to the end zone. They tried to Jackson Meeks there, but the Rebels jumped offside. 
Offside, defense number 51. The penalties after this is the goal, results in enough first down. This Vandegrift with that hard count with the clap, pulls him off, pulls him over, gets the free play, misses that, but does get the first down. Ole Miss will drop to eight and two. Still a really terrific season they put together here. You you play at Tuscaloosa and at Athens, same season. That's rugged. That would be their two losses. They win at Auburn. You get the virtual by ULM next, and then the Egg Bowl Black Friday on the road in Starkville. But an excellent chance to get back to ten wins. And the big difference tonight, Lane Kiffin will see it when he studies the film. Is just the first quarter line of scrimmage was in their favor offensively. In the last three quarters, they just were dominated in the trenches. Vandegrift tried to get him to jump offside again. They wouldn't bite this time. First and goal, pitch to the edge. Paul cuts back and scores. Andrew Paul is in the scoring column. Red Sir Freshman, his first touchdown. And Georgia going over 600 yards of total offense with that score. And Chad Lindbergh, the tackle, Sperlin, the third outside. Had a lot of success on that outside play, relying on that back to stretch it and then find the alley and accelerate through it. Throw anybody back there right now. They're going to run the football and have success. It's the fifth rushing touchdown for the Dogs, who've amassed almost 300 yards on the ground tonight. You said they're getting healthy for the stretch run. Still point to a three-peat here in Athens. It's good stuff here at the Georgia offensive line. Let's say he's circles. Again, maybe he had punched a hole in anger earlier. Out of earlier. frustration early, maybe. Uh, Michael Moore is telling him, call coach, you still upset? Here's the, here's the board. <laughs> Just having some fun. That offensive line's got some personality. Michael Morris by the way, wearing 77. That's a rotating number to honor. Their fallen teammate, Devin Willock, wore number 77. Tragically killed in an automobile accident after the celebratory moment here at San Francisco last January. And they rotate that around, and Morris wearing it tonight. And a lot to be proud of in this yeah. offensive line group. Yeah, Quick word from Verbo now. I'm live on the patio of this Verbo vacation home. It's recovery time after a hard fall win tonight. It's a good thing there's no host at a Verbo, so you don't have to worry about some stranger asking to join your ice bath party. Back to you. A few folks in the ice bath, yeah, you if, if available on the, on the Ole Miss side. I love that. I, I don't love it, but I try to do it. It's hard. Hudson Wolf down the middle makes the catch. It's it's therapeutic, my friend. It's it, well, it's I do the plunge. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you, I try to go three minutes and it. After a minute, you kind of get numb. You got to meditate. Well, I work with I you at the breathing test. Yeah, you're gonna have to coach me up on that. I go all the way to the neck. Arms in is a different level. Head, you got to go head. You got to get, a, no. get your head underwater. You're put at the end of it. Yeah, that's what you uh, do. Here. Spencer Sanders, a nice looking yeah. run. Holly, you, you love yeah. offensive line as much as anybody in the planet. It, it's a party down there on the Georgia sideline at this point. They're having a blast, and I actually went over there and said, hey, who broke that whiteboard? And they said, we did. Every offensive line started yelling, we did, we did, we did that together. I can tell you this. They spent an entire period at practice on Thursday doing hand drills. It looked like UFC meets wax on, wax off. <laughs> Stacey Searles does the best job with this offensive line. They're deep. They roll a lot of guys, but they are engaged, and I love it. They've destroyed this whiteboard down here, and that's not easy to do, guys. That was a fun drill to watch. You talk about violent hands, heavy yeah. hands. Oh, yeah. We've seen strike it. power, all those things the linemen like to talk about. Yeah, the, the, the offensive line, we said it a few times now. They're, they're a fun group. There's the board, <laughs> what's left of the board. But again, they, they did that to their own miss defense, too. They just punched a bunch of holes in them tonight. I'm, if I'm Kirby in that locker room, you're giving away a game ball, you're going to honor and recognize somebody, it's that offensive line. And again, the backs are healthy, Bowers and McConkey are healthy. But having Mims back helps solidify this group. 292 yards rushing tonight. And when you can run the football in this offense for Mike Bobo, and you put Beck in these receivers in favorable matchups, he didn't get touched tonight. And it's again, interesting to see it. Excuse me, Kirk. Yeah. Because it is as great as this is, as comprehensive as this performance was against a top 10 team, 
having won the division already. Tennessee come off the loss. The Sanders launches down to the end zone. A battle there. No flag thrown. Trying to get it to Braylon Brown. You still got to go to Knoxville. Yep. You, you don't need it to get to Atlanta, but you need it to stay perfect. And that's all Kirby cares about. Uh, and, and they're going to hear all week that Tennessee's terrible and they should kill him. And Kirby's going to be fighting against that. Obviously, he does it every week. Makes make sure that his team is focused. And Tennessee still has talent. It's a different Tennessee team. They're, they're a team that has to play defense and run the football. I don't know how well that'll work against this Georgia team now that they're healthy. Some players down the depth chart getting some action now. That's Matt Jones on a carry. Besides opening holes for the running backs, protecting back well. Georgia didn't have a single play tonight for negative yards, so they didn't let the Rebels get across the line of scrimmage to make a single play. That's impressive. That's and, almost unheard of. Yeah, and, and especially when that's been their strength, Ole Miss's defense, tackles for loss and sacks is how they've played well, and that's been their strength of their, their entire season. Sanders retreating, retreating, and now just heaving the ball into the ground. It's really almost unheard of. You check the stats in games, almost unheard of. Not have a single negative play in offense. There's Jackson Dart. We haven't seen him since he headed to the locker room after that big hit. Says it all on his face. Don't know if it's uh, something more serious. We haven't gotten any reports whether or not there was a, a problem with the collarbone. And it, and he left it all out there. He yeah, battled tonight. And their first two series, they scored touchdowns. And you know, I mean, for the first two of their first three, they scored touchdowns. They're running the football. At will. Rain picking up here. What do you think Carson? The dogs had to finish this off. Where's Carson Beck stack up there with quarterbacks in the country right now? I mean, you got a lot of good players this year, but you're talking about a guy that's the head man of this offense that's competing for a SEC championship and possibly a national championship. I don't know on a national level if he gets the recognition and hype that he deserves. I think you're right. I mean, he's not going to win a statistical comparison to a lot of guys, including. Jaden Daniels in his conference. He didn't figure Daniels is going to be the all SEC quarterback, but Beck doesn't care about that. He says the stat I think is underrated for quarterbacks. Win. W's. Yeah, wins. I was impressed with how he walked into the room yesterday. We, you and I have never had a chance to sit down with yep. him in a production meeting. He hasn't done a lot of them until this year, and he just came in. There's just kind of an aura about this guy has, after waiting all that time behind Stetson Bennett, this guy's incredibly driven and motivated to be the guy for this team and will do whatever they ask him to do. It's not just about throwing for a bunch of yards. So Bowers comes back, looks great. Back efficient, but the big fellas up front plowing right through the Rebels' defense. Georgia puts half a hundred on Ole Miss. And will steamroll into Knoxville looking very much the heavyweight out of the East to collide with Alabama in a few weeks in Atlanta. The win streak reaches 27, third longest in modern history. Down to Holly. Well, Coach, this was a great performance by your offense. You had a lot of guys back, people were healthy. How did you feel like they operated? Well, to not punt in the first half and just possess the ball and keep doing what they were doing, they did an incredible job. Incredible job. You are not a key player on defense, but I was impressed with your young players. How are you keeping these guys ready and organized and able to contribute when they need this? Well, I mean, those guys practice every day, too, and they practice really hard. And I thought those guys got confidence as the game went on and played better in a really tough environment. Like, it's a really tough offense. You clinch a trip to Atlanta, Coach. What does that mean for your team and your quest to go three-peat? Means we got to play Tennessee next week. How do you keep your you guys focused on that prize? And that's not hard. They're a really good football team, and they're really hard uh, prep for us. So we got to go on the road in the SEC, and we're going to get back to work as soon as we can on that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's drilling into their head for the minute they arrive in Georgia. Focus. He knows what he's doing. If, if he hadn't figured that out, folks, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He sees everything, by the way. He sees everything at all times. You said if a leaf blows on the practice field, get that leaf over.